So after some uh, minutes, well, close to an hour, uh, the calculations have finished and this window uh, will open up uh, where you have to load the results. So we press the load button and find the file called models, which contains all the results. So now I have to go through each and every interval and have a look at uh, what the right number of components should be. This first interval here is kind of simple. Um, there's probably just one compound present. Now down here we see the core consistency as a function of the number of components. Right now we have one component. I can increase that to two components. And we see we get one component modeling the baseline and another component modeling the peak. And the core consistency is still high. Ideally, we go for the last component, which has a high uh, core consistency. High means closer to 100 than to zero, basically. In this case, this two component model is probably fine. And I want to specify that this compound here is a real chemical and we want to save the corresponding concentration and the spectrum because we want to look it up and see what the identity might be. So I'm going to say tag this as optimal and then I'm going to say that component number two is chemical and number one can be ignored. You see the colors here they're given by a, a neural network that predicts whether the profile, the individual ones, is a peak or not. And it makes sense here that it uh, guesses that the first component consists only of baseline compounds and the second of uh, peaks. So I'm going to press OK and move on to the next. Now this is a very, very low signal to noise ratio and maybe we won't be able to uh, find any peaks here. But let's have a look. We move on to a two component model and see what happens. We get two baselines and it seems there's some structure in the residuals. So these are the uh, ticks, the time profiles in the interval and these are the residuals after using a two component model. I'm going to move on. We can see that the core consistency is still uh, decent. And now look, now we actually get a really nice model uh, with three components. There's still a little bit of structure left in the residual, so I'm going to try and move up to a uh, four component model. Uh, and it's a little something, something kind of strange is happening here. It's related to something called a two factor degeneracy. It may be easier to look at the profiles in this window where we can see the individual ones. Uh, so then we can more easily see what's going on here uh, because they're on an individual scale. Well, we didn't quite get any of this information. Let me try and move on one more. Hmm. Well, let's take a look. It actually seems like we are able to recover a peak uh, in this right part as well. The model is not very good, but I'm actually tempted to say uh, that I want to keep this five component model uh, because I think uh, it looks uh, quite reasonable that we have these two compounds here. So I'm going to say tag this as optimal and keep component 1 and 2. Here we are. We move on. Ah, I think I must have made a mistake here. There's only two points here. So we're not going to do anything. We are simply going to ignore this interval. Move on to the next one, which seems very, very nonsense. Uh, there's probably not going to be any systematic information to be found here. No. I'm going to say that this is not leading anywhere. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Again, one of these really small peaks. First two components here are explaining baselines, so the structure is still in the residuals. Let's move on. Well, that looks kind of nice. It's quite impressive that we're able to find a peak like this in this area here. 
it's not perfect, but uh, it's good enough. So I'm going to be happy with that. We move on. Again, one of these small ones. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah. Something like this, maybe. Component number one. It's not all yellow because it's a very, very low signal to noise ratio. And so uh, it makes sense that it's a little bit difficult to uh, sort of identify the shape correctly. But it definitely is a peak. I'm going to say that I'm happy with that. Move on. Now this peak, if you look, is it's sort of an overloaded peak. And when you have overloading like this, that may lead to some non-linearities. So quite often when you have an over overloaded peak, it makes more sense to go for the one component model. If we move up, we typically see that the same peak gets modeled by several components uh, because of this non-linearity in the data. So in many cases, we're just going to stick with the one component model. And do like this. Next one. Hmm. Let's see if we can find the little peak here on the shoulder. Moving up. Hmm. Let's see. No. It's also a very, very small peak. Let's see. We'll try. See what we can do. Almost, but not quite. Let's see. No, it doesn't seem like we're able to catch this. And maybe it really isn't just one peak. I don't know. We're gonna move on. Next one. Okay. Looks like there could be two peaks here. Baseline. Move up. Still only baseline. Now it seems like we're catching one of the peaks. I want to move on and see if I can maybe here. Let's have a look. Yeah. See, we actually catch both the peaks here. That's pretty good. Um, pretty impressive. So I'm going to say component one and two are chemical, and the rest we disregard. This is the double peak. Let's see if we can identify that correctly. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to say one and three. And this one is around 4.1 time. I guess that's the one we have. Well, these are the two other versions that we had of those peaks, but we basically don't need to deal with them because we got both of them in this particular model. So I'm going to say that I'm happy with this and say make report. And just put it here, that's fine. And now if you do have the NIST database, it's going to look up the spectra of the chemical compounds and then it's going to put the a tentative name on each of these chemicals. Uh, and then it's going to create a, um, a peak table report completed. So let's see if we can find it. Uh, put it there, there. And here we have a report. And if we go to the relative concentration, then now I have the relative area of the first compound I identified. We have the name and we have the relative concentration for all the samples. And if I want to see how well it was actually identified, I can go here and we can see that it has a match factor of about 50%, which is not very impressive. So we're probably not going to trust this particular one. But we can go through each of them as we like and uh, we can um, analyze the data now. 
So that's basically how you use uh, Paradise in the current version. I hope uh, that this was instructive. Thank you.